1 Kings chapter 16, verse, through verse 29 and 17, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. In the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, became king over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. It came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the the sins of past. As though it had been a trivial thing of sins of Jeroboam and uh, son of Nebat. Sorry about that. And he took his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethabal, king of the Sidonians. And he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Halal and Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundations with Abram, his firstborn, and with his youngest son, Segub. He set up its gates according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken through Joshua, the son of Nun. And Elijah, the Tishbite, of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Beloved, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity of just worshiping you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we would ask that As we have gathered here, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. That last video will be at the very end, okay? The very end. All right. Uh, This morning, as we have gathered here, I don't know if you sense it, but I know that I definitely do in my spirit. I sense that there's something, a climate... Or something is happening where you and I just might get out of here alive. Do y'all sense it? Do y'all sense something that's going on around us that the signs of the time are at hand? That there's a political stage as well as a spiritual stage that's setting itself. And we're getting ready to see things play out in front of us as if we've never seen them before. Seeing Scripture come about. Seeing Scripture fulfilled. And with that, I would say this. These are the days of Elijah. Say that with me. These are the days of Elijah. As we look at Elijah, here we had a king who established himself And, you know, I would hate to think that the Word of God said something like this about me. We look and see what the Word of God says about Ahab and how that that God detested everything that he was doing, hated all that, that he had done in times past, all the kings that were before him. He was the most wicked. And what he did, he ends up setting up these, these, these idols and bringing into Israel itself idol worship. Now, as I look at this and we think about the days of Elijah, there is a climate right now in our country as if there's never been before. We're seeing things being set up uh, that, that you and I cannot even dream about or even imagine that are before us, and we are being complacent and sitting back and doing nothing about it. Our religious freedoms and our religious rights are literally being stripped from us. How are we doing this morning? They're being stripped from us, and you and I need to be just as Elijah was to stand up and be bold, speak the Word of God, and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. These are the days of Elijah. Let's think about this. In the days of Elijah, people were being persecuted as well as being tortured and killed for their own faith. Right now, whether you realize this or not, 
some 150,000 Christians are killed every single year. We don't see that taking place in America, but it's taking a, a, a place around the world. Right now, there are more people dying for Christian faith than any other time in history. We have a rise of, of paganism and humanistic worship in our own culture where we see that, that we're living according to the systems of the world and not according to the system that God has put in place. Where we're living, living according to the kingdom of the world rather than the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. The German-based International Society of Human Rights, a secular organization, es estimates 80% of all acts of religious discrimination in the world are directed against Christians. Now, with that, I want you to, to, to remember Elijah. Remember what he was going through. He had, he had a mindset that he felt that he was all alone. He, he was being persecuted. He was trying to outrun a mad woman by the name of Jezebel. Okay, He was trying to outrun her, and with that process, what she introduced to that country of Israel literally brought them to their knees. And paganism, and rituals. Rituals where sexuality was being elevated, and human rights were being elevated, that you could do anything that you wanted to do when it came to life. Now, I want you to think about the culture where you and I live. Because you see, a part of Baal worship was just that. It was sexual expression. And the way that you expressed yourself was in worship. And through that, they would become naked. And, and when they would even cry out to God, they would end up cutting themselves and, and being in mass orgies and these different things. And I'm just speaking this morning. Everybody say, I love my preacher. That's the way that it was. Now I want you to think about our culture today because it's all about me and I and it's all about independency, it's all about sexuality. How are we doing this morning? These are the days of Elijah. And what God is simply wanting is someone to stand up just like Elijah did with that same spirit that was upon him that you and I will become bold and preach and proclaim the kingdom of God. Recently, you and I have gone through the covenants of God. And there was one part of the covenant that, that I didn't really speak about that much. As we looked at the cups, there were four cups that were here, but there was a fifth cup, which was a, a large cup. And that was a part of the covenant meal where they were literally waiting on the spirit of Elijah to come, or Elijah to come himself. And when he would come, he it knew it was going to be a prelude or a prelude to the coming of the Messiah. Let me go further with that. There's the spirit of Elijah on this earth today, and it's living and dwelling inside of us. You and I, just as Elijah was, we have the power to declare and decree and see things happen before our very eyes. You and I have the power and the authority upon the earth as ambassadors and sons and daughters of the Most High God to speak things that are not as though they were and change things right in front of us. You see, this is where Elijah was. He was living in a climate a political cl climate, a spiritual climate that was uh, literally degraded it right in front of him. And through that, he rose up and he began to speak truth. Do you know what God is wanting right now during this day and time? He's wanting someone to rise up and speak truth and declare the very works of the Lord. Everybody say hallelujah. Now let's look at this for a minute because in the days of Elijah there were, there were ri is a rise of paganism and worship of false gods and a, a great, de great decline in moral values. It was the time when the nation of Israel was led astray because of ungodly decisions by those in leadership over the nation. It, uh, in our time we are ruled by selfish ambitions, humanism, self-glorification, secularism, 
the God of mammon and sexual manipulation. All of that was about control, simply to get what you want. This is how it was in the days of Elijah. And beloved, I want you to understand, that's how it is today. And uh, we have to, to understand that God wants us to rise up and become the people that He's called us to be, decreeing and declaring the Word of the Lord. Mm. <laughs> Talks about how that there will be many who will rise up, Antichrist, false Christ, in the last days, deceiving others. It says many false prophets, prophets will rise up to deceive many. Because of lawlessness or sin, it will abound. And the love of many for Jesus Christ will grow cold. What are we seeing around us? We're seeing all of this taking place where, where many people are rising up to deceive others. The lawlessness is abounding. Sin is abounding. But I have discovered that where sin abounds, grace is even greater. Max Lee Dunham, who was the president at Asbury Theological Seminary, I'll, I'll never forget it because he said something to our graduating class. He says, you all are living in a day and a time that I'm envious of. Talking to us, an elder talking to the next generation. He said, sin is on the increase. And as sin increases, that means God's grace is going to increase. He said, yours will be a generation that will see signs, miracles, and wonders. You will see the coming of the Lord. And as I heard him speak these words, in my very spirit, it, it was quickened. And I believe that we're fastly approaching that. We're fastly approaching that this is the time where God wants to display His glory and His presence among us. But He is looking for a people who will rise up. Who will de decree and declare the word of the Lord. Just as Elijah did. Y'all ready? Now the problem is, you and I have developed the Elijah Syndrome. Turn to your neighbor and say Elijah Syndrome. What does that mean? That means that we are so sheltered hiding in our caves that we call churches. De depending really upon the Lord to, to, to nurture us and feed us. But we're afraid literally to come out and be the people that God's called us to be. Now I want you to know the cave is a great place. It's where you hear the voice of God. It wasn't in the whirlwind. It wasn't in the fire. But it's in the still small voice. And God is still there. And God still speaks to us. But God has called us to be prophets, priests, and kings out there doing His work. Declaring the works of God. Seeing His glory, His power, His manifestations before us. But we have the Elijah syndrome. <laughs> what is that? It's a sense of energy depletion, dissatisfaction, where we have spiritual attacks and then we form doubt, even where we begin to doubt God. And what we do is we're told we cannot pray anywhere but in the church. We cannot pray anywhere but in our homes. We can't go on the streets and, and minister to people. We can't go into the world and, and preach the gospel. And we live in fear rather than doing that which God's called us to. So we develop the Elijah syndrome. We feel like we're all alone. But listen, God is rising up an army. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm part of that. God is rising up an army that is getting ready to come forth and we will go forth with signs, miracles, and wonders declaring and decreeing the very work of God in the world. Look to your neighbor and say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> you see, throughout Elijah's ministry, he was known for his willingness to publicly declare the Lord's will and judgment fearlessly. In the face of great adversity. And 
we know that, that he was not always fearless. We see that. And, and you and I have got to rise up just like Elijah did and be willing to decree and declare fearlessly, no matter what the opposition is, <laughs> we must declare the work and the word of the Lord. Amen? His ministry was marked by his declaration of the word of the Lord to the people. And he did not rely on the systems of the world. He simply depended upon the Lord. How many people here sense that, as I was saying earlier, there's something that's happening in the atmosphere? Do do y'all sense that? Anybody? In my spirit, it's just within me. I want you to understand, with the spirit of Elijah, no matter what is breaking around us, God is going to supernaturally provide. Y'all ought to be doing something right now. God is going to supernaturally provide. Just like He provided for Elijah, we're going to be able to to, to, to go to the cupboard. We're going to see the meal and the oil multiply. God is, is just going to take care of His people. And the prophetic word is going to be upon us as we're, we're living righteously and in just, in a just fashion, in, in the right fashion. And the word of the Lord is going to come forth out of His people. These are the days of Elijah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think we need people like Elijah to stand up and preach the truth no matter what the consequence. We need the people who are willing to be like Elijah, who are, who are willing to stand up and point out where others are going wrong and, and state the standards of God. What are we doing this morning? We need someone like Elijah who's willing to stand alone if necessary simply for the truth. The truth is not being spoken or preached. We've given in to individuals who will tickle our ears rather than preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is anybody here this morning? We need the Elijahs to come forth who is willing to face down the worshipers and the priests of the false gods, the false religion that is out there and where you and I are being bold with the truth and power and demonstration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's happening around us? We have the form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Empty words, empty sermons, pale, pathetic, palatating preachers that cannot preach their way out of a paper bag. Who are yellow streaked, who are more afraid of the people in their pews and their pulpits no longer have pull. They're more concerned about a paycheck than they are the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got news for you. I am not here to please one person in this room. I do not have to give an account to you. The only one I will stand before is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not the politics of the church that gets us into the kingdom of God. It is His Word. It is His power. Now, problems we don't have enough Elijahs in our pulpits. The spirit of Jezebel has taken over. The spirit of Ahab has taken over. These are the days of Elijah when God is wanting someone to rise up and preach. But it's just not in our pulpits, it's also in our pews. People manipulating, controlling in order to get what they want. Uh 
manipulating the truth. These are the days of Elijah. Who is going to stand up and demonstrate like Elijah did? See, it's just not in what's being said, it's in what's being demonstrated. Y'all going to get that in just a second. I'll let that soak. Everybody say the kingdom of God. When you come to this church, as you walk in, you're here to hear the gospel, you're here to hear the good news. Of Jesus Christ. You're here to to learn about Him. Hear about Him. Hear about His blood. Hear about all that He's done. But when we leave this place, it is about you demonstrating that out there. That's the kingdom of God. It is you laying hands on the sick and watching them recover. It is you ministering peace and hope and love to a broken world. That's what you and I are supposed to be doing out there. But you ain't doing it. Oh, I'm just happy, Pastor Rick. I just come here and I put my daughter in the plate on Sunday. Oh, bless God. I've sat in the same place for 20 years now. This is not what it's about, folks. You've come here to hear the gospel, to be empowered, to go forth and demonstrate in the same spirit that Elijah had, in the same spirit that was upon Christ Jesus, that lived and dwelt inside of him, now lives and dwells inside of you. These are the days of Elijah where you and I are to go forth in the power of the Spirit, demonstrating the grace and the love and the mercy and the glory of God. I'm about ready to preach and y'all just looking at me this morning. You and I need the spirit of Elijah, a spirit of boldness in our life. Someone say hallelujah. Everybody say the kingdom of God God is within me. me. Think about that. What does that mean? That means just like Elijah went decreeing and declaring the word of the Lord, he read in God's word how that the heavens would be shut up when a nation would not follow him. And so he asked God, shut up the heavens. Don't let it rain. Don't let the dew come. What happened? He was decreeing. He was exercising the authority that God had given him. And you and I have been given the authority as sons and daughters of God to decree a thing and to see it come about, to literally speak it. To, to, to make change in the atmosphere, change in the climates. And as you and I pray and speak the Word of God and we begin to decree a thing, it will happen in front of us. Anybody here this morning? Oh, but Pastor Rick, if I do that, people are going to talk about me. Let them talk. I love going to ministers' meeting in the Methodist church. I'm looked at. I'm watched. That's that crazy dude. God's just wanting some Elijahs. He's wanting you and I to rise up, folks. Let people talk about you. It doesn't matter. Mm. I've done my best in my ministry not to preach error to preach the truth but you know even in times as, as you're learning and you're growing in your faith you're like oh you, I, why in the world would i've ever preached that why do i even talk about that because you grow past that you know what i'm saying past those things and we we do that in our own lives and so even uh, as i stand before you today i want you to know this god's word's true And God, as as we preach His Word and we we speak truth, (laughs) things happen. It's just that simple. These are the days of Elijah. Why? Because this is the time you and I are to declare 
the word of the Lord. That's what the song says, right? So what does that mean? That means that you and I must stand up against the ungodly kings and priests and the religious systems that do not get us close to God. We must demonstrate it. We must stand up against the spirit of Ahab and the spirit of Jezebel, both that that are so self-centered and manipulative, controlling us. Stand up against those things and say, no, I choose to follow God. I choose to hear God's word and experience His truth. Everybody say, Ithabal. Can y'all say that? Ithabal. Say it again. I'm going to teach you something this morning you never knew before. Say it again, Ithabal. This was actually Jezebel's name. It's not Jezebel. It's Ithabal. And when the kings were writing the story, when they were writing about the kings in the Bible, when, when that, that was being taken down, they changed her name to Jezebel, which Ithabal means the priest of Baal or priestess of Baal. Y'all with me? Jezebel means the woman of dung. Everybody say, wow. Wow. So what are you saying, Pastor Rick? I'm saying this. As long as you follow the systems of the world, and as long as you follow the religious system that's out there, you're not going to end up in anything but dung. Everybody say, wow. Wow. It's dung. And if you were a Jewish person and you were reading that and you read the story and you read Jezebel, you would know exactly what that means. A woman of dumb. Everybody say, wow. Huh. Revelations talks about how that the spirit of Jezebel will permeate the land in the last day. How are we doing? Revelations 2, 20 through 23. Talks about the spirit of Jezebel who called herself a prophetess. this woman of Baal or this woman of uh, of Ithabel the woman of of the Lord the priestess of Baal literally means the woman of dung everybody say wow (laughs) so you and I need to understand that there's a system a culture that is out there that literally fights against truth some of us get caught up in it and when you begin to hear the truth you even question what you're hearing because you've heard that which is false for so long Hmm. God is wanting us to rise up with the spirit of Elijah against the kings of the earth against the religion of the earth is anybody here God is wanting us to rise up and stand against those who manipulate, who have the form of religion, but not the power thereof. Uh, yes, this is, is the time where we're, we're concerned about what is going on, but we have to understand that God is going to supernaturally provide. You and I will walk in resurrection power. We will see the oil and the meal multiplied before us. We will see supernatural provision as long as you and I stand on the side of the Lord. We must become careful not to become discouraged or think that we're alone. For there's a remnant of believers that are still here, ready to prophesy, ready to to speak on behalf of the one true God, ready to speak out and prophesy on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm about ready to preach. We will not see God in the whirlwind or the fire, but we will know the voice of God. We will hear Him speak to us in a still, small voice. There will come the time where you and I must stand on the Mount Carmel and we will see the priest of Baal destroyed right before us. We will see fire come down from heaven. We will see the glory and the power of God fully displayed right in front of us. We will see the power and, uh, uh, and the glory of God displayed in this nation, in, in this community, and beloved, it will be displayed in this church. We will be a people that will call things that are not as though they were simply because we know what God's Word says.
This generation who has risen up, who has experienced a portion of God's presence and God's grace. And because of that, we will rise forth just like Elijah and we will demonstrate God's glory and God's praise. We will see people raised from the dead. We will see people that are sick healed. We will see salvation being preached on the streets. Lives being changed right before our eyes as long as we stand up and speak the Word of God in truth and in power. Listen, y'all, just as Elijah was taken out of here on a chariot of fire, we will be a generation that will be caught up and we will meet Him in the air. We shall be like Him and we shall see Him as He is. We will be a generation that will get out of here alive. Is anybody here in this house? You can sense it. You can feel it in your spirit. So why is it that we keep playing church? Why is it that we keep doing the same things the way that we've always done them and we don't change and get into God's plan? God is coming back for a church that is without spot and without blemish. He's coming back for a church that is on fire with the power and the demonstration and the glory of God. We cannot have church as usual as the world is going to hell around us. While people that you know and love are breaking the very gates of hell, going through there and dying and spending eternity there. And it's business as usual. It's time for us to rise up with the anointing of God. It's time for us to rise up in power. You have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. There's a reason. It's not to sit here and look good and be happy and say amen and feel good on Sunday morning. It's so that you can go forth and change a world. Yeah. Demonstrating. I've never had a sermon like this before. It's time. (laughs) The world is being the world. It's time for us as the church to be the church with the spirit of Elijah standing up against the Ahabs. The Jezebels. Standing up against the religious systems of the world that do not profit anything. I love it because as you read the translations, you find that the priests of Baal, as they were out there cutting themselves and dancing naked and going around their altar before God, sends His power. In one translation, (laughs) Elijah says, Is your God on the toilet? The God out there cannot do anything. But the God that you and I serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who made water come from the rock, the God who made manna come from heaven, the God who who caused the flood to cover this earth. Are y'all with me? The God who was there as the fourth man in the fire with, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The God who came here, who was born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, is anybody here? Who became flesh, who put on flesh just like us, who demonstrated how that you and I are supposed to act and how that you and I are supposed to be. 
who took dominion and authority everywhere he walked. Who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I can't stop preaching. I'm trying. Who walked and demonstrated God's grace and love and power and authority among us and that same anointing now lives and dwells inside of us. That same Spirit that was upon Elijah, the same Holy Spirit that dwelled inside of Jesus now lives and dwells inside of us and we become the temple of the Most High God that He lives and dwells inside of us and because of that now you and I can go forth and demonstrate in power and demonstration healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers. That's what God's called us to. Come on, somebody in this house, do something. God is wanting the spirit of Elijah to be upon his people. These are the days of Elijah. It's time for the church to rise up. power and in demonstration. Folks, our problem has been that we've waited so long for a man or a woman of God to come along to do it. When this next generation is just that. God's not calling one person. He's calling the body of Christ. For all of us to rise up. To be the hands and, and the feet of Jesus. To reach out our hands in love and minister. Our problem is this. We want to see people saved before we demonstrate the glory of God in their lives. Listen to what I'm saying. We go up to them, oh, bless God, you need Jesus. You're just going to burn in hell. I'm not saying that, honey. (laughs) (laughs) But that's what we do. That's not what people did. That's not even what Jesus did. Jesus saw the infirmity, saw, and He was moved with compassion as He saw them, and He ministered healing and demonstration. And through that, He was demonstrating the kingdom of God. And then it was after that that they began to follow Him and they believed. God's calling us to be individuals that are demonstrating His love and grace in the broken world. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. Turn to your neighbor and say, these are the days of Elijah. Mm-hmm. I want us to stand and we're going to sing a video together. Can you, you got the music up for it? Appreciate it, brother. I want us to stand, I want us to sing this. And beloved, this is your altar call. You can get out, turn it up there. You can get out, you can move around, you can dance. But we're going to dance all the way out of this church if we have to, amen. Going out in the world declaring these are the days of Elijah. Sing this. Turn it up real loud.
Hallelujah. These are the days of Elijah. Let's do something about it. Amen. Go in peace and may the God of peace go with you. Amen.